Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to have three lessons about adding and subtracting fractions. The first lesson is about the basics. This is part one. And then we'll talk about, in part two, we'll start adding fractions that are a little bit more challenging. And in part three, we'll look at the application, so some word problems. So first off, the basics of adding and, and subtracting fractions. We need to understand, or we have to know and have a bit of experience with common denominators before we get started. Um, so if you have not seen that, check out this video. I'll put a link to it there. And then make sure to check out so that you understand how to make fractions have the same denominators. So this is the basics of adding fractions. If you have part, like this here, it's like a half, half of a circle, and you add it to the other half of the circle, you would get the whole circle. So one half plus one half would give you two halves. And you notice what you did here. You added the numerators only. The denominator remained the same. And so you ended up with one over two plus one over two. One half plus another half gives you two halves, or that's also equal to one whole. What about when we get a situation like this, where we get this piece and this piece, and it gives us that together. So one third plus one half gives us, we have no idea. There's not really a nice, clean way to do that um, by adding those fractions just the way they are. You can't just add the numerators and, and then kind of pretend with the denominators. You actually have to go through a process. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about actually adding or subtracting. And with adding or subtracting, you need common denominators. That's the key to this. You can't add things that have unlike denominators. Just messes it up. So here are the steps for adding or subtracting. First, you convert the fractions so that they have common denominators. Then you add or subtract the numerators only. Add or subtract just the numbers on top. Simplify, and then you're done. So for this lesson, we're going to go through some examples, mainly of fractions that already have the same denominator. And then in part two, we'll look at doing all of these steps, first converting them, then adding, subtracting, and simplifying. So let's go ahead and just add these fractions that we have here. 3 over 5 plus 1 over 5. 3 plus 1 is 4, and it remains the same. So 3 fifths plus 1 more fifths fifth will give us 4 fifths, all right? Sounds good. It makes sense. If you have 3 parts out of 5, you add on one more part, then you would have 4 parts out of 5. All right. Add this one. 4 sevenths plus 1 seventh. We add those together, and it gives us 5 sevenths. That's our final answer. All right. If you're setting the table, there are 7 plates. You had 4 of them set. You added 1 more out of 7. You've got 5 out of the 7 done. All right, now let's add these ones. This will take a little bit more. 2 out of 6 plus 1 out of 6 gives us 3 out of 6. And then with this one, I wanted to show one more step, and that is that we have a common factor. If we list the factors of 3, it would be 1 and 3. And the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So we have a common factor of 3. That's our greatest common factor. So we would divide both the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, which gives us 1 over 2. And that would be our final answer in lowest terms. So again, if you need a recap on factoring fractions or getting fractions into lowest terms, and that, we have a whole other lesson on that. But right now, we're just applying what we know. So we're adding those fractions, reducing it down to lowest terms. Let's do some subtracting here. 5 minus 2 is 3 over 9. And we're going to reduce that down to lowest terms by dividing by our greatest common factor of 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Our final answer is that you're left with 1 third. That's your fraction in lowest terms. And you subtract the numerators only. 5 minus 2 is 3. And then to simplify, we divide by our greatest common factor of 3. All right, let's subtract these fractions. We have 7 minus 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. 
5 over 12. And then if we want to search for common factors, 5 is a prime number, meaning it only has the factors of 1 and 5. And 12 has the factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. They don't have any common factors other than 1. So therefore, this fraction is in lowest terms. All right, let's do one more subtraction question. 2 over 21 minus 5 over 21. This one here is actually a very interesting one because we have 2 over 21, like we have 2 21sts, and we're taking away 5 21sts. And when you get that type of situation, we are just joining together the numerators. The denominator is going to remain the same out of 21. But we actually go negative, because 2 minus 5 is negative 3. If we start with 2 and we subtract 5, we get negative 3. So we have now negative 3 over 21, which is fine. And we can reduce that to lowest terms. We'll divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3. They both have a common factor of 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. And 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we end up with our final answer is actually a negative 1 over 7. All right? So that's, again, a situation where you end up having to use a lot of the information that you have or that you've learned in other situations, in other lessons and things like that. All right, so quick recap on the steps. For adding or subtracting, you convert the fractions so that they all have the same, same denominators, common denominators. And in this one, all of our fractions started out with common denominators. Then you just add or subtract the numerators, simplify, and you are done. That's the steps for adding and subtracting fractions.